Well, this is Boulder Woods, and I must say, this is quite an impressive place. This is a landscape, a woodland photographer's absolute dream. This is lovely. There's so many different sorts of tree here. Just slowly spin you around. I've only just walked out of the car park 50 meters. And look at those colors. Look at these trees. There's some good photography to be had here. So I'm just going to mooch around. I'm not sure what I'm going to find yet. I don't know the area. I've never been here before. And we'll just me and the dog have a look and see what we can find. Hopefully, well, I'm more than hopeful, I'm completely convinced I'll find something to shoot. It's almost one of those situations, there's almost too much to shoot, but oh well, it's better to have that than to have nothing to shoot. So join me in a minute when I get set up somewhere. Spoilt for choice here. Um, the low lights creeping in and actually lighting, I'm on the side of a slight hill and the sunlight's coming in more or less straight across the top of some ferns, as you can probably see behind me. Uh, slowly spin you around. And one scene that impressed me is this one up here. You see these old trees? They're forming like a little alleyway with some brighter trees in the distance at the other end. It's a bit difficult to see with this camera. Let me zoom in and see if I can um, make that a little more obvious what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that little arch there. The arm doesn't work in reverse as well as you'd hope. Um, and what I'm trying to do is I've got the 100 to 400 on and it's set to 300 millimeters. And what I'm getting is that shot which I think is really very nice and I'm hoping the sun will come out and light these trees up in the distance. Um, it's just catching the edge of this one slightly but that beautiful moss and this sort of nice natural arch that's forming I think makes for an interesting scene. I've actually got it set at a relatively open aperture of f8. The reason is I want these two trees here to actually be absolutely tack sharp and I want the trees in the distance to be blending into the background. It's not a common thing for landscape photographers to want things to be out of focus, but I think sometimes it adds an awful lot more depth and it throws the emphasis onto the things that you're interested in. In this case here, what I'm going to do is take a second shot with the focus point actually on that second tree, which will throw these out of focus and I'll blend the two shots together so that the distant trees are still out of focus. So that I have these in focus, that in focus and the rest of it out of focus. So I'm going to take that shot now uh, 13th of a second at f8, 300 millimeter I've got the lens to and I think that might makes for a nice image. What I might try is actually spin it round to portrait and actually try to get the top of that join where the two trees cross because there's some nice green leaves in that particular area so I'll give that a go. Well, this wood is amazing. I've only walked about 50 metres, 100 metres into it and 50 metres into this area that I'm in at the moment, which if I slowly spin you around, um, you can see the bright sunlight streaming in past the trees. The sun is still very low in the sky and just behind you, but I'm looking straight at two trees that are intertwined and they're forming a massive shadow, which I'll prove to you those are the two trees and if I slowly spin you around you'll see why. I like that series of shadows creeping in all directions into this shot and the highlights of that mangled old manky old tree there that's fallen against this still live tree. I'm standing with the camera actually in that shadow because I don't want to cast a shadow into the image and it works quite well for me because set up in portrait mode I've got the 24 to 70 on there's a few ferns in the foreground and what I'm hoping to do is get this massive shadow framing this tree and the other fallen tree which is incredibly complicated shape creeping off to the left and I quite like that shot so I'm going to take that and I'll probably focus bra uh, sorry exposure bracket that. It's focused currently on the trunk of the main tree and I'm at f13 so I've got a fair depth of uh, field there. Eighth of a second f13 and I'm going to now open up the exposure with some compensation to get some more detail into here which I'll blend in in post-processing. So it's the same image it's just exposed 
brighter so that I've got more information in the shadows to play with without bringing in too much noise. And I actually, I quite like that image. I haven't got the tripod with me, the other tripod, so I can't just set up and show you what I'm doing, so I'm doing it the best I can. Anyway, I've got, I'm travelling quite light, so I've got a little backpack on here, and that backpack's got the 16 to 35 in, it's got the, well currently the 24 to 70 is on the camera, and I've got the 100 to 400, which gives me pretty much all the range I need. Um, I've just seen some deer run across the shot in front of me, not close enough to capture with the 24 to 70. I didn't have the 100 to 400 on and the 200 to 600 in the boot of the car because I didn't want to carry too much weight, so I didn't really get a chance. But the light levels are so low in here, I'd have had to crank the ISO up so high to even think of start of getting them moving because they were just scampering across in front of me and uh, I would have had to have had a pretty high shutter speed to have even got them something above a 500th of a second. And they were about a 50, 80 metres away, so chances of getting anything there was really quite slim. So I'll just press on with the boring landscape stuff. Guys, with all this woodland photography, I will get out and get some uh, more landscapey stuff. But woodland is one of the genres that I really do enjoy, as you probably notice if you follow the channel. Um, I am spoilt for choice here. I've set up for another shot. I've got the 24 to 70 on at 50 mil at the moment, and what I'm actually trying to get is this shot here. There are three trees. One, two, three, and I want a. a Portrait orientation, I've got very strong highlights because the sun's streaming in from the left here onto the three of them. And if I get the positioning right, which is about here, that tree, that tree and that tree have got nice separation. And then there's that little tree in the distance there, um, adding to the frame. But I want to be quite tight in on this. I'm really only interested in those three trees. So if I show you on the back of the camera what I've got there, but as you can see, massively blown out. I'm at F13. And I want to bind the compensation down so the highlights don't get blown, which is about there, which is a very dark shot at minus 2 EV. So I'm going to take that one and focus on the tree in the foreground. That's a very, very dark frame. And then slowly increase the EV compensation. That's zero. And I'm getting blown out elements on the middle tree. And now I'm going to pull it open quite a lot, blow out a lot of the detail in the, uh, the highlighted areas, but I've got detail in the shadow, so I'll take that one. And then we'll exposure blend this together in post and see if we get half a reasonable image. Um, as you notice, it's a portrait orientation. I'm at 50 mil, I'm at ISO 50, and I'm at plus two compensation F13 six second exposure so the leaves will obviously be a bit of motion in them because there's a tiny bit of breeze here but not to worry I'm just going to look back at those images and see that they are in fact as tack sharp as I hope they are they are as tack sharp as I hope they are good okay I'll press on and see what else I find Well, I found another interesting little shot here. Um, the lighting is really very harsh, but what I've done is, um, I'll show you the shot. It's basically this series of trees here, with the sunlight's coming in from the right. And it's very bright, and there's obviously a lot of darkness here um, in the shaded parts. And what I've done is I've actually put, I don't know if you can see that, that, that is a variable. ND and I've actually got it at an angle so that it's running across from my thumb to my second finger. Um, the idea being that that will, if you look at, watch the back of the camera here, watch the screen, when I put this on, it's actually taken a lot of the light out of this quarter here, or diagonal, lower diagonal, which gives me a lot more dynamic range to play with because what I can do is just dial in no clipping, which is about... Oi! Come here! 
What are you barking at? I'll take that shot. That's a very dark shot. Uh, F10, fifth of a second. And I'll now open the exposure up. It's slightly clipping now, but not very much. But it's a lot better than it would be if I didn't have that neutral density graduated filter on. So I think I've got enough information there. So that's the shot for that one. And I'm going to go and find some open ground now and get some uh, wider vistas. So before the battery runs out on the vlogging camera, which it's about to do, I will, uh, I'll head off. See you in a minute.